and good morning, Savannah and the Coastal Empire. It's the coach, Carl Damasi, on the Carl Damasi Sportsport, presented to you by Coach's Corner. That's right. I'm back on the Soundgarden stage. It was a free bird night last night. Leonard Skinner tribute band. I heard it was a packed house. Okay. And there's always a lot of fun in the Soundgarden. And did I say Coastal Empire and the Low Country? Yeah, I got to talk about the Low Country pretty soon because the University of South Carolina at Buford is starting up basketball, and we got kids from Savannah, Georgia playing over there. So I got to check it out. Savannah State, I think, kicked off their basketball se season Monday, so it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of hoops in the area. Once again, glad to be back. Last week I was in Michigan, J Detroit, Michigan, to support my son. Last home game, played one of the best teams in Division II football history, Grand Valley State. But you know what? Those kids played hard. They coached them up, and I, I was proud to be there. So – uh uh, let me just uh, fix my mic over here. I know which way I want to go, Coach. Okay, we'll go this side, okay? Uh, <laughs> I know, I'm talking to myself. I'm not crazy. I'm not answering myself. So, but anyway, uh, I, just, I, just, I just love doing this, and uh, it's always a lot of fun, and I'm glad to be here every Saturday. Last Saturday, I was in Michigan. I talked to the Georgia High School expert on high school football, the voice of high school football, Georgia, John Nelson. We talked about the preview of the games. Uh, this week, I'm talking to Kyle Sandy, the guru of high school basketball in Georgia. Then I got uh, my athlete of the week from Savannah Christian, Maggie. I got to try this. Kiradice. Kiradice. She'll correct me. Uh, Savannah Christian volleyball player, all region, all state. Georgia Coaches Volleyball Association, all state. Pretty high honors. Uh, she was all region. She was the player of the year. I got to have her on. And then we'll wrap it up. Talk, maybe maybe I'll switch it. I'll go Kyle, Sandy last. I'll go BC first. BC, Benedictine. Three out of the last four years, the Georgia Independent Athletic Association clay sport shooting team champions. Uh, they won this year by six. They lost year by six. The Savannah Country Day knocked them off last week, last year. Uh, Benedictine comes back, and then we'll wrap it out with my three videos out the door my, and my editorial about what's going on in sports. So hold tight. Got to check something here. My guest at 930 uh, is having problems. Uh, let me ask her. Um, you got to love live. Live. Uh, <laughs> live radio, live internet. Okay, she's having trouble getting on the internets, so I'm trying to help her out here, so uh, we'll see what she says. But anyway, we got a great show lined up. Like I said, I think I'm going to start off with the uh, Benedictine military uh, head coach, champion head coach, three out of the last four years, three championships for him, and uh, ju just pretty special to talk to him, and that's Howard Morrison the third. Then we'll go to our Weathington Chiropractic Clinic after the week, Maggie Kiritis. I, 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 Kira, Kira, Ritis, uh, Kira Kytus, uh, she'll, she'll correct me. I, I practice all night. I got even the, the, uh, phonetically way to, uh, pronounce it from the, uh, I guess you would say the legend of high school volleyball here in, uh, in Savannah, Georgia, Julie Jones, over 800 wins. And she was part of that team. And then, uh, we'll wrap it up with Kyle Sandy talking about local hoops here in Savannah, Georgia. All right. So here we go. Three steps in the door, high school, college, and pro. I got to do this quick so I can get this young lady on by 930. Okay, what else? Step one, high school sports last night, week 13, playoff uh, implications. First week for most of our Savannah teams, semifinals for Bethesda. So let's get into this, okay? Good showing by Richmond Hill. Uh, they went up to one of the best football programs here in the state, Grayson. Uh, Richmond Hill lost, though, 34-24. Great season by Matt Lazat. Next year's going to be tough in that 6A region that they're going to. All right, in Class 6A, Effingham won the region title for the first time in 28 years, but Lovejoy comes into the Palace of the Pines and knocks off the Rebels 47-14. to Upset alert, upset alert, upset alert. Georgia High School, Class 5A. Jenkins, a four-seeded team, knocks off a number one-seeded team, Arabia, Arabia, Arabia Mountain, okay, uh... 14 to 13. Great job, Tony Walsh and that crew. Hold on, I got another glitch going on here. Uh, let's see. Got to go. It's just, you know, being a one-man show, you know, being the host, being the producer, 
being in the technical director, there's always something going on. So let me just make sure this is working. Okay, it's working. So back on track again. All right, so Tony Welts, Jenkins Warriors, big win, knocks off a number one seeded team, 14-13 Arabia Mountain. All right, okay, class 3A, Calvary. All right, let me step one step back, okay? Jenkins now will travel to Dutchtown next week in the Sweet 16. All right, then we go to... Class 3A, Calvary, 48, Jackson, nothing. They had to play. They had to do their senior night because the week before it was canceled. So a uh, big night over there at, uh, you know, 63rd and Paulson. Uh, they will play Thomasville, which is another perennial state champion. They're number 22 out of their region next Friday or Saturday night. I'll have everything posted on the Prep Sports Report. Go check it out. And this is what I am talking about this. Savannah Christian, four, not one, not two, not three, Four overtimes to knock off Peach County, 48-46. Uh, the story is on the Prep Sports Report. Nathan Dominance has it covered. Go check it out. How they did it, okay? Uh, it was crazy. I was watching on and off, okay? Uh, let's go here. Um, Savannah Christian will take on Morgan County next week. Morgan County is the number one, so that means Savannah Christian will be on the road. Uh, Morgan, Morgan County is 10-1, 5-0 in region. Savannah Country Day, the little team that can, goes up to ups of the, they're leading, and they lose in a heartbreak of 46 to 45. John Mooring does a great job over there with those Hornets. All right, Class A, Bryan County, just rolling, just rolling. The Redskins, the Redskins take care of East Lawrence last night, 55-14. First region championship in the school history, first playoff game, first playoff, well, I don't know if it's the first playoff game, but first playoff victory last night. 55 to 14. They will take on Pelham, a number three seed. So maybe the Redskins will be playing home next week. All right. And the Georgia Independent Athletic Association, I made it to half of this game. Memorial Day School all over Harvest to Christian, 34 to 6. They'll be playing Robert Toombs. They played last week and got beat 63 to 6. But I'm telling you right now, Jaha Tell, I was on the sidelines, got those kids excited. They play good football. They're quick. They can catch the ball. They can throw the ball. Great job, Memorial Day School. St. Andrews goes out to Tift area. Went with only, I think, 17 players. Injury bugs all over the play there for Kevin Prasant and his Lions. They lost the TIFF area 49-27. Bethesda, Bethesda, Bethesda. Undefeated. They beat Northside Christian at Daffin Park last night, 32-6. They'll be playing the Skis at AA Championship next Saturday, 12 noon, Charleston at Charleston Southern University. And I didn't write down who they're playing. <laughs> Okay, coach, but they'll be at Charleston, and they're playing another team. Oh, Williamsburg Academy. Williamsburg Academy out of Kings Tree, South Carolina. Okay, they're both undefeated. Uh, they're undefeated, so it's going to be a great matchup. So there's your uh, high school results last night. Don't forget, we have two games tonight, 6 o'clock, Memorial Stadium. Benedictine host Baldwin. Okay, and over at Pooler, where everything's cooler and Pooler, the New Hampstead Phoenix will host their first ever high school playoff football game against West Side Macon. Always a perennial power. All right, let me get through this quick. We're at 9.09. I, I wanted to be done by uh, uh, 9.10 so I can get the, this lady, next lady on you. All right, I'll come back with all the other sports uh, two steps in the door later on in the show, at the end of the show. But I got to get out of here so uh, I can get my guest on at 9.30. Uh, once again, checking in. You got a comment? Dennis Keller, I love you, brother. I love you. Yes, it was a big night at Calvary, 48 nothing. Moving on to the quarterfinals. You have a wonderful day. Go Cavs. And once again, I am, I am now waiting for Savannah United soccer game. Oh, you're watching a soccer game. One of your grandkids probably, right? So you watch it on your smartphone. Hey, you can watch my show anywhere, on your laptop, on your smartphone. Just get it done. All right, got to get out of here. Got to uh, get my uh, show back on schedule. You know me, I'm never on schedule because I talk too much. Let me take the Dennis Kessler's uh, comment away. Let me uh, find my commercials. Okay. And uh, I'll be back in three and a half minutes with the head coach of the state champions, the state clay sports shooting champions, Benedictine Military School with Howard Morrison. You're watching the Call of the Sports Report right there on the Coach's Corner Sports Network. Hey, sports fans, looking for the ultimate sports and entertainment destination in Savannah, Georgia? Look no further than Coach's Corner. 
At Coach's Corner, you'll find everything you need for a great time, including TVs everywhere so you can catch all the latest sporting events, an outdoor seating area perfect for enjoying a drink or a meal on a warm day, a wide array of drink options from beers to cocktails, a comprehensive sports schedule so you can cheer on your favorite teams year-round, prompt service even when it's crowded, a fun and lively atmosphere perfect for letting loose with your friends, and of course, delicious food from famous chicken wings, hamburgers, to delectable calzones and pizzas. Coach's Corner menu is sure to satisfy your cravings. In addition to all this, Coach's Corner also features an upgraded sound garden. Now more seats, more bars, and an upgraded sound system. It's the perfect spot for hundreds of fans to gather and enjoy the latest local bands, tribute acts, and rising stars. So what are you waiting for? Join us at Coach's Corner for the ultimate sports, music, and culinary experience. Coach Corner can't wait to see you soon. Remember, Coach's Corner is located at 3016 Victory Drive, right in Thunderbolt, Georgia, and on the World Wide Web at Coaches.net. Remember, Coach's Corner, where every day is game day. At Calvary Day School, we want our students to be fully equipped and on the cutting edge of academics making a difference in our world. Your child will grow academically, physically, socially, and spiritually. At Calvary, it is so good to say we are one school with one mission and one vision. Faith, academics, excellence, and building champions through Christ. Calvary Day School, we consider it a privilege to meet with your family personally. Call Philip Lee, Director of Admissions at 351-2299. That's 351-2299. For over half a century, it comes in uniform sporting goods or trophies. Thompson's got you covered. From cleats to caps and best prices on the biggest brand, Under Armour, Adidas, and more. From baseball to soccer, volleyball to softball, and yes, football too. Every season starts at Thompson's Sports Shop. From cutting and equipped at Thompson's Sports Shop's new location, 6606 Abercorn Street Suite 102 in Savannah. As we through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and seasonal on Saturday. At locally owned Thompson Sporting Goods and Trophies, come see where everyone is a winner. Yo, you still want some real New York Italian food? Bada bing, bada boom. Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering is open at 7630 Skidaway Road, Tuesday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. serving breakfast and lunch right here in Savannah, Georgia. Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering has been serving the public for over three years. Now, if you want Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering goods delivered to your door, go online to savannatakeout.com or doordash.com or just pick up the phone and call 912-354-2914. That's right, 912-354-2914. Kabish, and remember, we ain't New York style. We are New York at Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering. Wetherington Chiropractic Clinic. Your back hurts, another body part hurts all the time. It makes you mad, the pain drives you crazy. You just want to pick something up and throw it across the room? If you can, at the Weatherton Chiropractic Clinic, you get complete chiropractic care and pain relief to help you move better, have a less painful life, and of course, achieve a healthier lifestyle. The Weatherton Chiropractic Clinic is now located at two locations in Savannah, Georgia, at 329 Eisenhower Drive and in Pooler at 114 Canal Street, Suite 603. So visit Dr. Bart Weatherington at the Weatherington Chiropractic Clinic for all your chiropractic needs. And welcome back to the Carl Demasi Sportsport right here live on the Sound Garden stage at Coach's Corner. Once again, it's always a lot of fun here. I'm here every Saturday morning. And like I say, every Saturday I love to do live guests. But sometimes the guests can't come on live. So I got to make adjustments. You know, I got to make a different game plan. And uh, this is the, no, uh, <laughs> no, uh, it's not unusual that I have to do this, okay? I, I'm, I'm trying to do two things at once here. So, I apologize. So, uh, but once again, let me start all over. Yes, I like doing the show live. I like having the guests come on Zoom or whatever you want to call it, and we get to interview them. But sometimes the guests have things to do, like this next guy headed up to Athens. Big football game. I didn't get to it. You know, UGA taking on Ole Miss tonight. He set up there to watch the game. He already had tickets, so I had to pre-record this segment. And they deserve to be on. This is their third state championship out of the last four years. The Benedictine. Military school, clay sport, target team. They do a great job. This man has been part of the staff for five years. He's been the head coach for four years. Three out of four years, he's won a state championship. And I'm talking about Benedictine military head coach, clay sporting uh, coach, Howard Morrison, the third. Here you go. Here's my interview from, uh, talk, or here's my interview 
talking about the state championship with the head coach, Howard Morrison. And what's up, sports fans? Once again, like I said, sometimes the guests can't come up on come on live. Uh, they got things going on on a Saturday morning. And you know what? If I could try and record it, I'm going to try and record it. But this this is special, so that's why I wanted to record it. So uh, once again, Benedictine Military School. Let me get this right. Clay Target Sports Team won their third state title, the Georgia Independent Athletic Association, third state title in the last four years. Uh, the program's on a roll. There are a lot of these kids um, shooting clay targets uh, with uh, the Forest City Gun Club, but they come together during the school year, and the Georgia Independent Athletic Association has a uh, clay target sport um, um, section, if you want to call that. But it's a lot of fun. Once again, three out of the last four years. Uh, I'm going to be talking to the head coach. He's been there five years. The last four years as the head coach, his first year was an assistant. He got a little... Uh, arm twisted to take the job but uh i mean the program's on a roll uh and clay sports shooting around here is big time so joining me now on the coach's corner hot seat from the benedictine military school cadets clay sports shooting team the 2023 georgia independent athletic association champion head coach howard morrison the third hey coach thanks for taking the time to come on and finding time to do this absolutely thank you for having me so you know, I mean, you've been there for five years, and you gave me the story. You got your arm twisted. <laughs> so, yes, sir. And uh, but you know, how long? How long you been coaching or part of clay target shooting? Um, well, I actually shot some clay targets when I was um, a freshman in college. Um, not as competitively as these kids do today, but a, a little bit of sporting clays and a little bit of skeet. Um, and then I sort of put it down for a while, um, you know, getting married and having children and those kinds of things. And then my son started uh, shooting for the juniors in fifth grade, uh, got to know Lee Summerford, and uh, he put together um, the Forest City Juniors and then, of course, uh, the BC program. He started the program uh, seven years ago, was a head coach for, um, for two, and then um, uh, asked me to come on as an assistant uh, which I did for a year. And after a year, um, I think he, uh, he was ready to turn over the reins and, uh, said, all right, Howard, you're going to be the head coach next year. I said, wait, wait a minute. I'm not sure about that. And, uh, he says, you're ready for it and it's going to happen. I said, all right, great. Um, so we've been rolling with it ever since. Um, Brennan Lemieux at school has been, uh, been a tremendous help as have all of my other coaches, um, I can go through the names if you want, but, uh, but yeah, I have, uh, I, have, I have a very solid group of coaches um, and a great group of kids. Um, you know, they dedicated it and determined and put forth the effort this year and, and uh, made it work. So it was great. So what were some of the key factors that contributed to team success this year? Um, again, I think it was the kids' dedication, determination, and persistence. Um, you know, we we had uh, we had some practices in the rain. Um, we had some practices on days where they were anxious to get to football games, um, but they were there, and they were there consistently. And um, when, and you know, I, there's obviously a little bit of goofing around that goes on prior to practice, <laughs> but once they got out there on the fields and, and needed to be serious, they were serious. Um, and then I think they got, um, especially our sophomores, we have nine sophomores on the team and, um, most of them I think will be back next year. Um, but, but that's just one more year of experience that they've had, you know, they, they felt the taste of, uh, not being uh, as successful as we wanted last year, and they didn't want that to happen again. Um, so when they went to practice, they were serious, they were dedicated, and when they went to the tournaments, they they were there to um, make a statement. All right, and you know, like with every every team, I know uh, coaches, whatever sports you, you set a team goal. Is that team goal every year at Benedictine uh, for the Clay Sporting Team to win a state championship? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, we, we have a lot of, a lot of talent. 
Um, I feel like we have a lot of depth. And um, I, I think that the, the, the uh, it's possible every year. It's just a matter of how much effort is put forth by, by the kids. I've told them before, guys, I can't go out there and shoot for you. I can't, I can't send the coaches out to shoot for you. Um, and as I said, we have some great coaches and, um, but the, but the kids, they have to do it. And, uh, and they, and they know that. And they, um, when, when it comes down to crunch time, they, they make it happen. Um, but yeah, no, I think the goal, I would assume the goal for every team is to, uh, to win state every year. Um, but certainly with the group of kids that we've had over the past few years and going forward, um, that's, that's the goal. And if you're just tuning in, it's the Call of Demasi Sports Report on the Coach's Corner Sports Network. We're talking to the head coach over at Benedictine for the Clay, the Clay Target Sports Shooting Team. They just won their third state title out of the last four years. Howard Morrison's been the head coach for four. He's been there for five years. And, uh, I mean, it's just it's just a great story. Uh, so you got a team, and, you know, you, you're proud of these kids. Uh, but, you know, let's explain to people – what the what do you call them the categories or divisions are you have what ski you have uh give us the three categories that they got to score points in so yeah disciplines so the, right the discipline there we right. go i got it i remembered yeah. no no you're good um but so yeah they do they have to shoot um uh sporting clays um which is typically 15 different stations with uh two different presentations of birds on each of the 15 um stations typically it'll be a report pair where you shoot one and then when you shoot the first time the second one goes uh and if not it's a true pair where you call pull and both targets fly at the same time um so that's sporting clays uh that's most all of the time out of 100. um a lot of the qualifiers they'll shoot 50 uh, skeet and 50 trap but in state it's 100 sporting 100 skeet and 100 trap um, so the trap targets are uh, basically you have five guys standing um, in five different positions, not really shoulder to shoulder, but, you know, probably two people you could fit between them. Um, so, you know, what, a couple of yards apart. And, and the target comes out of the trap house, which is in front of them and flies up and away at different angles. You don't know what the angle is until the bird comes out. Um, and then, uh, so that's trap and then skeet of course is, um, eight stations, seven in a semicircle and number eights in the middle, uh, skeet and trap are both shot in four sets of, uh, 25. Um, so you have a, a kid that shoots, let's say a 25 straight, uh, he gets to the last station and he has to shoot that eighth target, um, or eight the last eight station an extra target there um and we've had we've had kids over the season that shot 100 straight and skeet um we've had kids over the season that have shot in the high 90s and sporting clays and trout um and it's just like i said it's been great to great to be a part of it's uh it's a pleasure to be a, a coach to these these fine young men and and they're you know Again, I'm going to say it one more time. The dedication that they put into this sport uh, is tremendous. All right. So let's give some uh, a shout out. Okay. So we talked about sophomore Mills Hollis was the high overall award winner because he, I, I guess he hit the most uh, clays. Then most clays, senior, yeah. senior Jackson Furland came in second. And then uh, junior Drake Cooper came in third. You had someone coming fourth. They also qualified for being all state also. So talk about these guys. So, so the, for, for Mills Hollis, Mills Hollis, uh, um, well, first, before we get to that, okay. so to answer your question, we had the top, Mills Hollis was the top shooter in the general division overall, and Jackson Furlan was second. Now, our scores, <laughs> yeah, right, our scores are based on the top five shooters, so our top five shooters, I don't think, um, I actually know Drake Cooper was not in third place overall, but he was our third place shooter. So for our team, we had Hollis first, then um, Furlan, then Drake Cooper, 
um, then Gavin Walmsley, and then Jim Reynolds Morrison. Um, those were the top five for BC this season uh, at state. Uh, and then, of course, you know, those guys were closely followed uh, by, uh, you know, some of their other uh, teammates, uh, two sophomores, actually. Um, but, yeah, so so the scoring is, again, it's 100 targets of skeet, 100 trap, 100 sporting. Each shooter shoots 300. So the total score is out of uh, 1,500 that you mentioned earlier. And um, and and the cadets broke, uh, what was 1,376 out of the 1,500. Right. right. That means you didn't miss too many, right? That means we didn't miss too many. <laughs> that is correct. All right. So, uh, so but, you've been doing this for five years now. The kids come to uh, Benedictine. They want to be part of this. Uh, what advice do you give these kids if they want to, to aspire and be, get better and – and uh, be better on the team or be better at the sport all, all in general because then they jump over to Far City Juniors and they're going out for national championships. Right. Well, so the, the – and you just pretty much said exactly the answer to the question. Um, the You can't just shoot for August and September um, and, and, and October and expect to be, you know, contributing to that 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 level. Uh, these kids, most of these kids, and I think this goes for all of the high school teams, most of the kids are shooting for some other um, program like the Forest City Juniors uh, in the off season. Um, and I say off season, it's the high school off season, it's the club team, right. you know, regular season. Um, but they are, they're shooting, you know, a couple of days a week, probably not all year round because they'll have two or two and a half months off before the club season starts. And then they'll have a couple of weeks off after the club season ends and before high school starts, but, but staying, you know, staying engaged and not, you know, letting cobwebs uh, or dust accumulate on your shotgun. Um, that's, that's the key. They gotta, they gotta be involved. They gotta stay active and, and keep shooting, um, you know, to keep sharp. Um, and, Last and so, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I no, was going to say, going. you asked earlier about uh, Mills Hollis. Mills Hollis uh, started shooting, I think it was uh, three or four years ago um, uh, for the juniors program. Came to BC as a freshman last year. He was in the uh, top five uh, for our score last year uh, at State, uh, along with uh, Jack McKenzie uh, and um, – Jim Reynolds Morrison, who all three tied for our our on our team for fourth place, uh, so one of them would have been dropped off if they'd had to have a shoot off, but obviously there was no need. Um, Jackson Furlan was also in that mix last year. Um, Gavin Walmsley was just behind those guys, but I mean a couple more targets, he would have been up there. Um, and then, um, yeah, so it's been it's been a great. Uh, it's been great. I mean, to see the progress the kids make, um, you know, and watch these kids just excel. It's awesome. All right. The last question I got for you is earlier on in the interview, you said they go shoot as a team in July. Now, is that the SCT, the Scholastic Target uh, Program Nationals? You go yes. you go as the Forest City Juniors. How do you get to, so the guys from BC get together and shoot as a school? So – what they do for the SCTP Nationals is they take all of the kids from the club teams and they basically make subsections in which you'll have, um, you know, all of the, the high school kids. They're shooting for their club team, but they're also shooting for their high school. So the SCTP started this a couple of years ago maybe two, maybe three years ago, I think. Um, and the first year, uh, BC won the national championship overall. We were in the top five. I can't remember. I think we were fourth, maybe fourth or fifth uh, last year um, overall. So that's skeet, trap, and sporting clays combined. Um, but we also got trophies for um, Skeet and Sporting Clays two years ago, uh, Skeet and Sporting Clays this year, 
and we were actually the skeet national champions this year or this past <laughs> summer i should say so uh, it's, it's kind of complicated the way they break it down and again the scoring is done differently because uh giaa scoring is based on the top five shooters scores in skeet trap and sporting glaze and then the way they do nationals it's based on your top skeet shooters your top trap shooters and your top sporting shooters um but again our top uh skeet shooters won the skeet national championship uh in 2023 right and uh looking at my notes um savannah christians Connor daniel came in came in third with i mean yes hollis had 283 furlan 282 and daniel 281 i mean if that's, that's right. not close, it's close. <laughs> so. and, and and I mentioned earlier that Furlan was in a three-way shoot-off. It was a three-way tie between um, Connor Daniel, uh, Owen Haas, Haas, and Jackson Furlan. And Haas, of course, ended up winning last year. Uh, just quickly, you want to throw out some advice to any of the parents that are listening, if they got a young son or a young daughter? Because, I mean, the girl from uh, Country Day was the high uh, overall winner for the state. So, you throw out and the keyboard. Yeah. Right. So you want to throw out some information if they want to get involved in something like this? Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think the trick is you get them started, uh, you know, not young, young. I mean, fifth grade, that may be a little bit too young. My son started in fifth grade and, and it was fine for him. Um, but uh, I think Mills Hollis started when he was in seventh grade. But, yeah, seventh grade. Um, and, you know, he's come along at a at a high rate i mean he's just boom 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 um uh gavin walmsley also started off i think at the same time maybe a year before mills but a year after uh, jim reynolds my son um and um I, you know it's um it's good to get them started early um if you come to uh tryouts as a freshman and you've never shot a shotgun before you're you're a hundred percent behind the eight ball. <laughs> so. um, it's you, you know you're putting yourself in a bad position. It's very hard to get the uh, skill in that short amount of time because we only have a three month season. Right. Um, so you know getting them started in in middle school I think is recommended. And um, you know if you can get on one of these club teams and shoot um, the off season, I, I also think that's a hundred percent a great idea. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Got to watch that. Got to turn that mic on. <laughs> what well, great, great, great situation. Great program. Uh, you know, just like fishing and other sports around here, big time. Clay sports shooting is great. I had a chance to do it, like I told you. One out of 40. Uh, one out of 40. Uh, uh, clays or birds or whatever they call them, skeet. Uh, I got to thank, uh, of course, if you know Savannah Dan, uh, he took me out there to, to uh, try this, and uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, just a great time. State champions again, 2023, the Georgia Independent Athletic Association, um, clay sports shooting champions, the Benedictine Military Cadets. Hey, it's a state championship, buddy. Everybody, listen, it's a state championship. They deserve the recognition. Check it out. Far City uh, Juniors Club. Uh, gun club great program all right i'm not going to go to break because i've been <laughs> i've been uh this this young lady's been holding i mean she's been back in the waiting room uh i told her 9 30 we're already four minutes over i didn't know that took that long i thought it was only 20 minutes but i guess it was 25 minutes but uh, uh i got to get her on and uh she is a uh, junior she helped uh the savannah christian preparatory school volleyball team uh go to uh deep in the playoffs again this year, she had 377 kills on the season, 49 aces. Okay, that means when someone can't serve it back to you. Kills, old school, is a spike. That means they, you just you try to hit it harder and they see if they can, can hit it back. And then, of course, digs. That means where they uh, hit the ball over the net and you got to make a great play. She had 157 digs. She's the region player of the year. She just got voted the Georgia Volleyball Coaches Association uh, to the All-State team. I mean, last year... All greatest Savannah Morning News, uh, all region. Uh, but you know what? When a coach says this to her, and a coach, a Savannah Christian head coach, Julie Jones, who has over 800 victories, it's pretty special. She says Maggie is a very hard worker and is so passionate about the game of volleyball, which is why 
she's so much fun to coach. I know she's giving me her best and putting in the extra time to be successful. She has a bright future at the next level and is up there with some of the great players that I've coached over the last 25 years. That's pretty special. Joining us now on the Coach's Corner Hot Seat as this week's Weatherington Chiropractic Clinic Athlete of the Week. I don't want to mess this up. Her first name's easy. It's Maggie. Maggie Kira Rides. She'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I got to get her on. She's been waiting patiently and just a great story. Hey, Maggie, how's it going? Maggie, can you hear me? Can you hear me? My mic's on. Can I hear you? <laughs> Check your microphone. How about now? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? All right. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to log off and then log back in and hopefully your, your microphone will come on. It's okay. It's probably the internet service where you're at. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's an internet show, and uh, she's up uh, probably at a volleyball tournament. So uh, she told me she was going to try and link in. We had trouble getting her email to work. That's at the beginning of the show. So hopefully she'll uh, click right back in, and uh, we can go from there. But just to catch up quickly, go back to my sports. Cross-country championships were last week. We had a bunch of players, a uh, bunch of runners at Carrollton. Uh, we, you know, we didn't have a state champion, but Savannah Arts Academy girls who won it last year finished third in the standings in the class 2A um, division. Leah Nice finished fourth individually with a time of 20 minutes, 20 seconds. Uh, Eli Howard, who is a ninth grader, was 21-17. Freshman Francie Tedder, another freshman, okay, she was at 21-49. Uh, she finished 14th. Okay, we're trying to, trying to get Maggie back on again. Keep our fingers crossed, Maggie. <laughs> can you okay. hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? There we go. We got it working. We got it working. So, once again, great season. Uh, you are having a great career over there at Savannah Christian, and congratulations, Region Player of the Year, Georgia Volleyball Coach Association All State Honor. It's pretty special, isn't it? Yes. Thank you so much. It is. All right. And I know I sent you pr uh, questions, and of course, the number one question I left off was the first one I always ask: When did you start playing volleyball? I started playing volleyball around when I was like 12, 13. I started playing at Pool of Rackets a couple minutes down my house. And my school coach that I have now was the one who told me I should try volleyball. And so I did, and I really liked it. And so I played club after that. And yeah. All right. Did I pronounce your name right? Uh, Kira Kites. Kira Kites. Yes. All right. I had Kira Rides, but it's Kira Kites. I, I mean, you know, I've been teaching for a long time. It's tough with some of these names. So uh, Kira Kites, I got it. Okay. So, all right. And people are watching and I'm not trying to make you blush or anything, but hey, Brian Toot, Maggie is the best player in the area. One of the best in the state. Thank you. <laughs> so people are watching Brian Toot uh, his daughter plays over at St. Vincent's. Uh, good friend of mine. He was my, I know I'm giving away my age 20 years ago when I was the head football coach at Groves. He was my trainer. So we'll go from there. All right, but so congratulations again. What does this award say about your game? And tell us about how you feel you make contribution, contributions to that Savannah Christian program. Well, I do train a lot every day, um, and I make sure to really stay positive and just have a really good um, energy and bring that to the team. And I also feel like um, I always do try to better my volleyball IQ every day. So that's something I do work on. And then I'm also really prepared and focused before every game so I can perform my best. Well, you know, for what Coach Jones says, you're always working at it. I mean, another great season, over 300 kills, under 150 digs, 50 aces. Well, I think I said 49 or something when we started. Uh, but what's some of the keys? What some of the keys can you contribute to this? Is it playing volleyball all year round? It's club season. It's the high school season. What makes you so good at this? 
Well, um, I do. Well, right after school season ends is when club starts. But even when we're in season, I do a lot of strength training, resistance training. Um, I also really like stay focused and determined to do like any training I can any day. I watch. I also watch a lot of volleyball, whether it's like college volleyball or just professional volleyball. So I can see if I can get any, get any tips or tricks from like the, the top players. But yeah, I do a lot of training. Um, my dad takes me to any gym time I can get so we can get as much touches on the ball as we can. So yeah, I would say. And that's the key, getting enough touches. I, I know that from uh, coaching a young lady in basketball by the name of Veronica Searsant. I mean, yeah. they, they were fanatics about getting touches, about setting, about hitting. I mean, I mean, you got to go that extra distance and uh, or, or that extra yard or that extra spike or kill, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> So last year, sophomore, you know, all region, all great Savannah morning news. Uh, uh, you've grown into a, an outstanding uh, uh, volleyball player in the area, one to watch. What were your goals coming into this season, though? Uh, I mean, you already were at the top with all those, in those all those car- categories. What were your goals coming into the season? So basically, my sophomore year, I really relied on my heavy hand and my like strength and power to get a kill. But my goal um, was to really like like work on my technique and just focus on that like footwork blocking passing and just but mainly footwork and because technique is like you need to have technique in order to like perform well and I just really relied on my strength and I mean strength is good but like you also need to like know technique and um, I also focused on seeing more uh, like of the court and just getting more of like a visual of the court to like know where I can hit at like where to tip, where to roll shot, just focusing on that. I also feel like I've learned to move on from my mistakes. Last year, I would get in my head, and it would really like affect <laughs> my play. But this year, I feel like I've gotten really good at it, just having, like, I would say a small, like, just a small memory of it and just moving on from it. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you're a young athlete, and, uh, you know, I coached for a long time, and, you know, everybody says, uh, you know, phys- physical, but – the mental aspects of games and mental aspects after you do make errors, I mean, plays a big part in what you're doing. If you're just joining me, I'm on the internet's the Call of Demasi Sports Report. Uh, we're talking to the Weatherington Chiropractic Clinic Athlete of the Week from Savannah Christian Preparatory School. I'm thinking about saying your name right away. Maggie Karitis. Kirakides. 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 Okay. I know. I, I, Kira Kites, I got to get this straight. I'll, I'll learn by you seeing you next year when you sign somewhere. I'll know how to say it. So, but, uh, okay. All right, so we talked about how you got prepared and how you're getting stronger, your goals. If I had to talk to Coach Jones, I love Julie Jones. I hope you do too. And she wanted to tell me about your strengths. What are your strengths when it comes to the game of volleyball? Well, I can play multiple positions. So if you put me on the court, you put me in a position, I can play it. So um, I also am very focused during games which is super important. And I can hit multiple spots on the court. So I can adjust, like, if there's a block blocking line, I can hit cross or hit that cut shot or just adjust to anything. Um, I'm also a very consistent player, I would say. So my team nice. trusts me. And, yeah, being consistent is super important because, like, your team will really trust you that way. So, yeah. So if, you know, I go to Coach Jones again and I ask her, what does Maggie need to work on? What would she tell me? So um, I'm always trying to like find something to improve on just because it's important. And I do feel like I need to work on my blocking and just the footwork for that um, because I just, I really need to, need to align with the hitter that's hitting. Um, I've always really needed to work on blocking. So I've really been like really focused on that, trying to get as much gym time um, I can to work on blocking. Also, I would say my serve receive, just like passing in general, like getting my angle out faster, um, but yeah, that's some of the things I need to improve on, but I'm also I'll, always looking for something to improve on. Well, what I heard was angles and looking for the open areas. People think you just stand and hit the volleyball back and forth over the net, but you don't do that. <laughs> it's a little more complicated. So, yeah. all right. So you're a key player on one of the best teams in the area. Uh, and I know it takes a team to win games. You, you advance to the state quarterfinals again. You guys make deep runs, but as a team now losing that last match, what, what's the team's goals for next year? Well, the I would say just to win state next year. We definitely had it. It's just we kind of fell apart at the end. But for my goal is to win state next year. And I feel like we need to work harder as a team 
when next next school season. Also, for myself, I want to like continue to grow as a player and a teammate. But I would say definitely Wednesday is one of my top goals. All right, and I know I should have put this down. I, I apologize again. Give a shout out to your teammates. Give out some love to your teammates that uh, have also made that successful program over there that you're playing with currently. Um, so uh, I would say uh, Reese Emily. She's she just made my club team, so we're gonna be playing together this upcoming club season, which is super exciting. And yeah, I would say. So and what about what? A, go ahead. And then Mary Britt, my set, my setters, Mary Britt, Katie, and Laney. I want to just give a huge shout out to them because I mean, I couldn't hit if they couldn't set. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Don't forget about those setters. I mean, you know, yeah. the old days was you know, uh, you know. Bump, set, and spike, or I forget what it was called, but everybody says now it's pass, set, and uh, kill, whatever it is. So I'm just yeah. an old-timer at this. So uh, now, as far as um, family, like you said, your dad's taking you to get more hits. How has your family contributed to your success as a student athlete also? Well, I would say, well, my family, I wouldn't be here without them. They're my biggest supporters. Um, they always come to my games to take me to practices as well. Um, my dad, like I said, my dad always finds open gym time so we can go together and work on technique and stuff like that. Um, also my little brother, he plays basketball. He always came to my tournaments. He always comes to my games and supports me. And also as a student athlete, they're always willing to work with me, like, and help me with like, say math or anything. Like when I come home late at night from practice and I'm struggling, they always like, they're always open to help. But yeah. Nice. Nice. And now, you know, how long have you been at Savannah Christian? I've been at Savannah Christian since I was in daycare. So, <laughs> so you, you always say a lifer, okay? So, yeah. uh, you know, I had an older son went there for four years, and he loved it. So uh, tell us about going to school at Savannah Christian, what it's like academically, athlete, athletically for Maggie. Okay. So at SCPS, uh, the teachers really support their athletes, like 100%. Um, a lot of my teachers come to the games to watch us, cheer us on. Um, and also, they're always open to help, like, for tutoring before or after school um, on any subject just to help us, like, not fall behind um, on the material we're doing. And, I, like, it's, like, I email my teachers if I need any help because late practice or something, and they're always, like, willing to help, which is super important. Nice, nice. All right, so far, you know, you've been at Savannah Christian now, I found it since pre, pre, pre K, yeah. kindergarten, whatever. Okay, but as far as volleyball goes, what has been your most memorable moment at Savannah Christian? So I think my most memorable moment is sophomore year when we played St. Vincent's. Uh, for re let's we battled for region champs. Uh, we won, and it was a super intense match. We played five sets. Um, the energy was insane. It was such a good game. We both the teams we wanted to win so bad, and I feel like we really like it was at St. Vincent's home court, so we really wanted to win and we played really well. We played clean and I just feel like we played well as a team. Um, but yeah, it was super intense. It was one of my favorite games I've played. And I'm going to put you on the spot. I asked about your teammates. I left that off. I asked about the school. I didn't leave that off, but I left off what it's like playing for Julie Jones, who is a Savannah Christian alum. She's been there forever. Believe it or not, she was a heck of a basketball player. So in her youth, but uh, now she's gravitated to the volleyball. Tell us about Coach Jones. Uh, she's a great coach. She's super nice. She's super positive. And even, like, at practices where, like, some of us are kind of, like, down on ourselves, she always is, like, peps us up. And if she, we watch film a lot, so that's really important. But she's super sweet. Uh, she's very, very positive, which is super important. And I, she, I, she's been my coach for a very long time. She's coached me my first year at club. And, and um, that I, it, I just loved it. It's awesome. I'm really happy. That. Nice. You have any sets on your uh, dreams on a specific college, a university, or you just want to go where you want to go? Well, my dream college is University of Texas. Um, nice. I love them. I've always been a huge fan. I always watch their games. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Logan Eggleston, I'm a huge fan of her. She's an outside hitter. Well, she graduated and Zoe Fleck, she's was the libero. They both play pro in Europe now, which is so cool. And they, I loved watching them when they played. Um, but yeah, I would say Texas, I'm a huge fan. 
<laughs> you got it. Hook yeah. those horns. All yeah. right. So, like you said, you've been at school forever. You got a young young girl that wants to play volleyball that aspires to be like you. What advice would you give them to succeed at academics and at athletics? I would say um, just don't let anyone doubt your. Don't let anyone what they say doubt. Don't doubt yourself in your dreams. Um, stay focused. Work very hard. Um, and make sacrifices. That's one of my like big things. Make sacrifices. Like say on the weekend, um, your friend asks you to hang out. Uh, you sh you should just say okay. Well, I have a big game coming up, so go and get extra gym time in practice, and you'll f and you'll feel even uh, better whenever you go to the game and you play like really well. It's just because you make that sacrifice. So I would say make sacrifices, um, and just don't let what anyone says uh, say about you. Um, doubt, make you doubt yourself and your dream. So, so and when you have free time, where you, you you know you don't have to make those sacrifices. What do you like to do? Well. I would say I well I just love training. I love working out. Uh, like going to the gym. With my mom. Uh, we love cardio. And also, um, I like playing basketball with my brother. We go outside and we shoot some hoops. And yeah, I would say just like ha making some time with for me and my brother to play some basketball because that's his sport. And nice. going to the gym with my mom. Just some simple things. I got you. I know you got a year left in high school. But I want you to look into the future. Let's put the volleyball aside. Okay, what do you want to do uh, after volleyball or for a profession after you graduate college? Well, I do. After I graduate college, I do want to play professional volleyball. But after that, I really like, I want to be like a physical therapist. That's nice. what I want to do. But um, definitely after college, try to play professional. Well, play for the Greek national team. Then after that, go hopefully play pro in Italy or France and then just be a physical therapist. I'll still be involved with sports either way, but yeah, but playing professional is like my dream. So that's well, really you're, you're on your road there to get there and uh, maybe we can hook those horns. You wear that burnt orange. I don't know about getting used to the burnt orange after you've been used yeah. to that red. So, but, uh, uh, this week, uh, you're, you're my Weathering Chiropractic Clinic at the week for having just a great season, all all region player of the year. I mean, the Georgia Volleyball Coach Association, you've done a great job. I look forward to following you next year and uh, keep it up. And uh, as they always say there on Chatham Parkway, go Raiders. Thank you so much. <laughs> Remember, it's not go go Texas yet. It's go Raiders. Go Ra Yes. Go Ra <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you later. Thanks for coming on and being patient. I appreciate it. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I mean, just an exciting, uh, exciting situation over there for that young lady. And like you said, a good friend of mine, Brian Tootin, putting that post up there. She's the best player in the area. She's outstanding. I watched her play against St. Vincent's, and uh, she was awesome. And uh, they were missing a key player. She was all over the court. And it's just great to get, get these kids on. All right. Remember this name without me butchering it. Maggie Kirikaitis. Maggie Kirikaitis from Savannah Christian. She's going to be a big-time volleyball player. Hey, look what I found. Look who woke up this morning. It's the, the OG, the producer of Rubbin' and Grubbin', the man himself, Lawrence Bennett. Yeah, thanks, buddy. I know you're probably doing something with the grandkids or the wife's got you doing some honey list, but I always appreciate you coming on. Hold it. The boss man has something. What, what would you like me to tell him? You're right. <laughs> he says I'm right. John Henderson's out here uh, cleaning up from uh, last, last night's big show, so uh, he knows all about Lawrence Bennett, his his sidekick. Okay, so uh, once again, Lawrence, love you, brother. All right, next up, we got one more guest. It's pre-recorded, but this man knows Georgia high school basketball and basketball in the SAV is big time. So stay tuned. I'll be back with the man himself from Sandy Spiel, Kyle Sandy. You're watching the Call of Demasi Sports Report right here on the Coach's Corner Sports Network. Be back in three minutes and 30 seconds. Hey, sports fans, looking for the ultimate sports and entertainment destination in Savannah, Georgia? Look no further than Coach's Corner. At Coach's Corner, you'll find everything you need for a great time, including TVs everywhere so you can catch all the latest sporting events, an outdoor seating area perfect for enjoying a drink or a meal on a warm day, a wide array of drink options from beers to cocktails, a comprehensive sports schedule so you can cheer on your favorite teams year-round, prompt service even when it's crowded, a fun and lively atmosphere perfect for letting loose with your friends, and of course, delicious food. From famous chicken wings, hamburgers, to delectable calzones and pizzas, 
Coach's Corner menu is sure to satisfy your cravings. In addition to all this, Coach's Corner also features an upgraded sound garden. Now more seats, more bars, and an upgraded sound system. It's the perfect spot for hundreds of fans to gather and enjoy the latest local bands, tribute acts, and rising stars. So what are you waiting for? Join us at Coach's Corner for the ultimate sports, music, and culinary experience. Coach's Corner can't wait to see you soon. Remember, Coach's Corner is located at 3016 Victory Drive, right in Thunderbolt, Georgia, and on the World Wide Web at Coaches.net. Remember, Coach's Corner, where every day is game day. At Calvary Day School, we want our students to be fully equipped and on the cutting edge of academics making a difference in our world. Your child will grow academically, physically, socially, and spiritually. At Calvary, it is so good to say we are one school with one mission and one vision. Faith, academics, excellence, and building champions through Christ. Calvary Day School, we consider it a privilege to meet with your family personally. Call Philip Lee, Director of Admissions at 351-2299. That's 351-2299. For over half a century, it comes in uniform sporting goods or trophies. Thompson's got you covered. From cleats to caps and the best prices on the biggest brands, Under Armour, Adidas, and more. From baseball to soccer, volleyball to softball, and yes, football too. Every season starts at Thompson's Sports Shop. From cutting it equipped at Thompson's Sports Shop's new location, 6606 Abercorn Street Suite, 102 in Savannah. Every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and seasonal on Saturdays. At locally owned Thompson Sporting Goods and Trophies, come see where everyone is a winner. Yo, you still want some real New York Italian food? Bada bing, bada boom. Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering is open at 7630 Skidaway Road, Tuesday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Serving breakfast and lunch right here in Savannah, Georgia. Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering has been serving the public for over three years. Now, if you want Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering goods delivered to your door, go online to savannatakeout.com or doordash.com or just pick up the phone and call 912-354-2914. That's right, 912-354-2914. Kabish, and remember, we ain't New York style. We are New York at Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering. Weatherington Chiropractic Clinic. Your back hurts, another body part hurts all the time, it makes you mad, the pain drives you crazy, you just want to pick something up and throw it across the room? If you can, at the Weatherington Chiropractic Clinic, you get complete chiropractic care and pain relief to help you move better, have a less painful life, and of course, achieve a healthier lifestyle. The Weatherington Chiropractic Clinic is now located at two locations in Savannah, Georgia, at 329 Eisenhower Drive and in Pooler, at 114 Canal Street, Suite 603. So visit Dr. Bart Weatherington at the Weatherington Chiropractic Clinic for all your chiropractic needs. And good morning, Savannah, the coastal empire and the low country. It's the call of the Master Sports Sport right here on the Sound Garden stage at Coach's Corner. Because it's all part of the Coach's Corner Sports Network. And I forgot to do this in my intro. What is the Coach's Corner Sports Network? Four shows, three live, and one podcast. Okay. Of course, the Call of Demasi Sports Sports on every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 30, whatever I can get done. Then Wednesday nights, we got Rubbin' and Grubbin' with the Atlanta Man, Brandon Bain with the OG, the producer, Lawrence Bennett, all things NASCAR. They talk about car racing, rubbin', and then they grub some food. Okay, so, you know, pretty good deal there for Brandon Bain and uh, Lawrence Bennett. Right here at Coach's Corner, best wings in town. Okay, good pizza, too. Uh, and then, of course, uh, once a year, once a year, first week of April, the Masters, we have the 19th hole with the Herb Brothers. Short and Brent Herb do a great job. Check it out on YouTube, the 19th hole. It's adultish, five straight days. I don't know how these guys get all this information to go five straight days, but it's pretty impressive. Okay. So that's the three live shows. Then the one podcast, the Who's on First Base Baseball podcast with the coach, Carl Demasi and uh, my man, the baseball fanatic, Kyle Lawson. We wrapped up last week. Go online. Look it up. We're on TuneIn. You can listen to it on TuneIn Radio, which I got to start doing now with uh, this show. Got to find time to do it. That's, that's, what, that's what it comes down to. Okay, you got to find time to get this stuff uh, broken down and put on. So uh, once again, the Who's on First Baseball podcast. All right. So now we still got the football season going on. We still got teams left in the playoffs. Remember tonight, Benedictine takes on Baldwin at, Mem at Memorial Stadium at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock kickoff. And then over in Pooler, the New Hampshire Phoenix under Kyle Hockman 
take on Westside Macon. First home playoff game ever for the Phoenix, for New Hampshire. So check it out. That's at 6 o'clock also in Pula. But it's basketball season, all right? And if you don't know anything about this website, you got to go to it. It's sandyspiel.com, all right? Sandyspiel.com. Let me uh, go to my banners, and, of course, I left it out. <laughs> so let me run it across the bottom, sandyspiel.com. And there it is, sandyspiels.com. So check it out. You'll get all the basketball information you need, and the guy does a great job. So who runs sandyspiel.com? Well, it's Kyle Sandy. This young guy, he's young, has been doing this for eight years. It started out as a hobby. Uh, he was working for other people. He says, why not do my own thing? Well, he does his own thing now, and it, it, it's, it's unbelievable the following, unbelievable how many people love it, and he knows his basketball. So since we're starting high school basketball, which kicks off with first games next week. There have been a lot of scrimmages going on. He breaks down the Savannah area and the Savannah players to watch. For me, the coach, right here on the call of the Moscow Sports Board. But it's pre-recorded because he's at a tournament up in North Oconee. So here you go. We're talking hoops with the man himself, Kyle Sandy from sandyspiel.com. You'll enjoy it. See what he has to say about Savannah basketball and the players to watch. And as I tell you, I love having live guests, but sometimes the live guests are out there doing things. This guy, my next guest, is chasing basketballs all over the state of Georgia. And, you know, I thought it was six years. It's nine years now this young pup has been doing this. I mean, you know, you know, if, if you don't know about it, okay, uh, it's the most in-depth coverage of high school basketball in the state of Georgia. He knows his teams. He knows his players. He doesn't even have to look at a piece of paper. That cranial vault and that plethora of knowledge of girls and boys basketball in the state of Georgia, unbelievable. You know, he interviews athletes, coaches. He goes to tournaments. He's all over the place. And I think pretty much everybody has called him the guru of high school basketball in, in the state of Georgia. Joining me now on the coach scoring a hot seat like he does every year to kick off the basketball season. That's right. The round ball has begun is the man himself from sandyspiels.com, Kyle Sandy. What's up, guy? How's it going? Hey, coach. Thanks for having me on. It's been a while, but you know it's that time of year. We got to talk about some high school hoops, and I know that Savannah area always has a lot of good players and teams to talk about, so I'm excited to join you today. And I, I usually ask this, how do you find time to do all this? How do you, I mean, it's a full-time job for you now. I mean, but how do you find, and how do you know so much about so many kids? Uh, I, I try to be in the gym as often as possible without getting in trouble with the fiance. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's a passion. This started as a passion project, sandyspiel.com, and it's just grown and grown and grown, and it's been able to support me financially. And this is what I do 24-7, so if I'm not doing my job with, high school basketball. Uh, I'm not eating food. So I need to do this to survive. So it's been awesome. Yeah, I think the fiance would want you to do that too. Once she becomes Mrs. Sandy. So you got to keep on doing it. So all right, before we focus in, of course, I love talking about the Savannah area. Uh, but 2023 2024 basketball season, it's the last year of this crazy seven, eight division classification here in Georgia. Next year, we're going to six, but it's really seven. So well, it, look at that crystal ball of uh, Kyle Sandy of Sandy Spiels. What do, what do you think? What do you think it's going to be like? Man, uh, a lot is changing. I know all that stuff came out just yesterday, and I looked at it obviously, but you know that's in the future. I don't want to try and start memorizing that now and confusing me for the present time. <laughs> um, but a lot's going to change. Who knows? We might see some private schools drop out, leave the GHSA, join the GIAA. That's a real. A real threat, especially in these Atlanta area schools, I think, uh, and even on the outskirts of town, are thinking about doing that. So, And we still have some time for lateral moves as far as yes. from Region 6 to Region 7, something like that, to petition for those uh, type things. But a lot's changed, and we're going to see a lot bigger regions now. We're crunching everything, as you mentioned, from 7 to 6 classifications. Um, you're going to see some really good teams uh, get left out of the state tournament like you used to see in the old days. Like last year, we saw a team that was, what, 0-24 make it to the state playoffs because it was a four-team region. We're not going to have that problem anymore. Now uh, you might see a 22-win team not make it to the state tournament. So, you, you know, you take the good with the bad. Which would you rather prefer? I, I guess I'd rather see a good team get 
stuck at home than a team that hasn't even won a game earned their way into the state playoffs. But uh, things are definitely changing, and it's going to be a lot to try and wrap my head around. Yeah, and that, that'll be next year. And like you said, uh, the region – now schools can appeal to go from region to region. That could, last week it was appealing to go different classifications. Some schools won, some schools lost. But now now we got to go from region to region. Okay, this season, though, this year, what's what's the bubble like? Oh, man. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in all these classifications. You know, it's uh, – when you look at some like the higher classifications, you always kind of have like the usual suspects that are going to be good. Like McEachern boys are going to be good. Grayson's going to be in the mix. Wheeler will be in the mix. Uh, but then in the smaller classifications, you know, it opens up usually that, that very smallest classification class, a division two, that's always going to be a, a wide open jumble. And even on the girls side of things for that, like two private schools, I just found out they both added about six or seven transfers a piece. So they have completely new <laughs> rosters. So, when you're looking at a team like Montgomery County, that's uh, somewhat in that area down south there, uh, they have a really good girls program, but now you're going to have to contend with, you know, Green Force with six, 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 seven move-ins on the girls side that are coming in. A handful of Serbian six foot one guards. You look at Southwest Atlanta Christian, they didn't even have a team last year. They bring in seven girls and now they look like a team that should just kind of walk their way into the state title. So a lot is changing and it's, you know, it is what it is, the nature of the beast as far as transfers go. But we are literally already having scrimmage games in the season officially tips off on Friday. And I'm still finding transfers daily that are like moving the needle as far as, oh, boy, this team might be really good now. Um, it's just crazy. It's a wild, wild west, but it's been this way for a while now. So it's it's nothing out of the, the ordinary. Out of the ordinary. People getting people, kids, parents moving kids from one zone to another. It's just crazy. And, you know, we know we have, you know, things going on that aren't, but you, hopefully the parents are doing the right thing. Okay. So that's not what we're here to talk about. All right. So as I talk to my good friend, which you probably know, John Nelson from the Georgia Public Broadcast oh, and yeah. Sports Department, I call him the voice of high school football in Georgia. And he, he labels different parts of the state as, you know, the, the, the West Tundra, the East Tundra, the, the Great North, the Great South. Well, I want to focus on the Great South here, especially the, 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 Coastal Empire, and of course, the king of uh, of sports here in Savannah, Georgia, is basketball. And I know you follow it very closely. So, uh, what are your expectations of what's going to go over here on the uh, the East Coast of uh, Georgia high school basketball? Oh, one, one, one second. Are you going to start jumping into GIAA? Because I heard you say teams are switching. We we will see. My hands are already full enough with the GHSA. <laughs> Um, but GIAA, if teams continue to get vacuumed over there as far as like good programs, you could go from a, you know, just a, a competitive, uh, you know, somewhat classification jurisdiction, right. whatever you want to call that, to like really like, oh, if you want to watch the top players, you might have to go shift over there, especially on the private school rank. So we shall see. I won't I won't commit to anything just yet, but it might be pulling me that way eventually. All right. Yeah. You know, I, I know what you're saying, because I, you know, started the prep sports report. 20 years ago and now it's just on the web just on the website well just on the website which you know too it's just crazy how much information now i'm getting bombarded with plus also a full-time teacher coach well not coach right now but it's just amazing so yeah i just wanted to throw that at you i'm not trying to give you more on your plate there buddy because i know you got a lot to chew on so uh right. all right savannah georgia expectations 20 23 24 it's going to be open, especially on the boys' side. I mean, there's always a lot of really good programs, but I feel like there are some question marks or as far as, you know, we know these teams are going to be good, but we don't really know who's going to rise all the way to the top. Like Johnson, Savannah on the boys' side, they're always really good. They graduate Antonio Baker. That's obviously a huge loss, but Josh Quarterman's really, really good. Yes. I mean, he averaged about 16 points per game last year. So Johnson's going to be tough. Um, and he's got a nice little supporting cast around him as well. Caden Davis is a nice little shifty guard. Um, but that region, just in general, Region 3 and Class 3A, like Calvary Day, they started hot last year. Um, then they tapered off. They have a new head coach, Scepter Brownlee, who coached in the college ranks. Um, they have all that size now. You got – make sure I get these names right. Cole <laughs> Keir is about six foot eight. You got Cool Dang, who didn't play last year, is about 6'10", 6'11". So – you have size now. You have some good players that are returning. Uh, a freshman named Blaine Gunter, I think, can really play a six foot three, six foot four guard that can shoot the ball. And then, as it feels like in a lot of these classifications and some of these top ranked teams, 
football players. Are you going to get anything from your football players? Are they going to leave early? Is Michael Smith going to play this year? What are you going to get? I know they got a star quarterback that's probably done with high school basketball, but uh, some of these smaller classifications, they do have some big time football players that make a big impact. Um, so that's something to really keep an eye on. And then I'll shift over to another region, Savannah. Savannah's ranked number four in the state in Class A Division One. They have pretty much all of that team back. Makai Joyner really exploded uh, this offseason and picked up some D1 offers. And they have a nice nucleus. Deshaun Davis blocks a lot of shots at six foot eight. So there's some good basketball being played in the Savannah area, especially on the boys' side. And we know we kind of have an idea of, okay, these teams are going to be good, but I'm not confident as pegging right now this team is for sure number one this team's number two number three that's gonna really have to play out in the region play yeah and you know bc made a a final Mm -hmm. run to the final four and you're talking about two of the top quarterbacks in the country with luke cromenhawk which was a big part of that bc team and then you're talking about jake merklinger who is a was a calvary who was big part of that basketball team i don't i don't know if they're going to be there for this season so Mm -hmm. like you said you know and then you throw out michael smith uh uh you know I mean, you put those two guys uh, that you said from Calvary, they're six foot seven, six foot eight, six foot nine. I know they're tall, but they get to put those two bodies together. They don't even Michael Smith. So, I mean, it's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, there's a lot to be determined. And you said it, some great football quarterbacks down there. Uh, so that, that will be interesting. And I'm glad you mentioned Benedictine. Caleb Jones is one of the best scorers in the state. It feels like he just literally carried that team throughout the state playoffs average over like 23, 24 yeah. points per game. He can flat out fill it up. I know that jump shot looks a little uh, different when you see it come out of his hands, but boy, oh boy, he is just a pure scorer and he can uh, really just lift teams to new heights. So Benedictine for sure is going to be tough. And again, that's another team with LaDon Bryan, I believe his name is, is a football wide receiver, I think. Yes. Is he going to play basketball or not? Again, another big piece that's coming from the gridiron. And if you're just tuning in, it's uh, it's pre-recorded because this man's going to be uh, running around basketball tournaments tomorrow. Uh, well, today, which is tomorrow when I'm recording this. So uh, I'm talking to the uh, the man for sandyspiel.com website, all things Georgia basketball. Kyle Sandy, the brainchild nine years ago. This Well, eight years. It's going into nine years. When he started, it's now it's a full-time job for him. So uh, now as far as players i know you do your preseason players give us a quick shout out for the boys and girls in this area which you named a couple of them already yeah obviously like makai joiner from savannah is really really tough i think he has a chance to be one of the best players in the area caleb jones from benedictine uh joshua Gordon. Gordon from johnson robert spaulding he got hurt last year yes. at savannah country day he's a really good player and i i think he's back 100 percent healthy that's a guy that's really a sleeper that's flying under the radar uh, if he's able to get out there and make an impact, I really like how he can score from the mid range and he's got good size on the perimeter as well. That's the guy that colleges should really check in on. Um, so just off the top of my head, those are some of the top guys in the area. And even, you know, maybe a little outside of the Savannah area, like portals really, really tough with uh, those, all those three, uh, three seniors, Elijah Coleman, Amir Jackson, who's going to be playing at Florida as a tight end and then Joseph Thomas. So really good basketball in Savannah and even on the outskirts of town as well on the boys' side for sure. How about the ladies? you think Woodville Tompkins can uh, pull it off this year? We shall see. I saw them in the GBCA, and uh, they're definitely reloading. I love Bree Pelot inside, uh, one of my favorite players in the entire state, not even just as a player, as a kid as well. Uh, I'm rooting for her big time. I'm very excited to see where she ends up playing her college basketball at. Uh, really, I, I, I truly think the best defensive post player in the state of Georgia with how she blocks shots and rebounds. Um, but they're going to have to really work on getting getting the ball up the court and see who can get her the basketball uh, to score inside. But Woodville, I know Coach Roberson does a really good job of keeping them competitive. Uh, Calvary Day, of course, life without Hannah Kale now. They had Michaela Primo in the past. Destiny Godine sounds like she's going to be the one that carries that team. You got Bree Jones is supposed to be back as well. So that's going to be the nice little uh, two-player core there uh, to keep an eye on. So I think as far as like in that Savannah area, I still think Calvary Day is probably your best girls program. Um, But, you know, a a solid freshman class or a transfer here or there could really change things in the blink of an eye. All right. I said I wouldn't keep you long. I know you're a busy guy. So uh, we got two minutes left here. So – as far as uh, Savannah high schools go and, you know, the season gets played out, what challenges do you see them af- having after the season? Uh, I mean, 
I don't know. What, what are the challenges over there? I know it's, you know, sometimes, I mean, there hasn't been a lot of transfers, it seems like, from what I've no. seen in like the Savannah no, area as far as jumping from one school to the other school or anything like that. So I feel like it's going to be competitive across the board. And just looking at what the regions have projected out to next year, again, I don't have it memorized off the top of my right. dome, but it feels like for the most part, a lot of that stuff's kind of going to be the same. Um, I think it's going to be a big year for some of these programs. Again, like Johnson, how is Johnson going to continue to reload once Quarterman graduates? Uh, you're looking at that Savannah team who has everyone back this year. If they don't get it done this year, you could see Savannah heading into next season as really a favorite, uh, just dictating on what the rest of that classification looks like. And then on the girls' side, Calvary Day, you know, they got their new head coach in town now, sliding yep. over a chair to take over the program. I think he's going to bring a lot of energy and really have those girls excited to play. And I think they're still going to be a good program. But Savannah Country Day, you can't forget about them on the girls' side. It, it feels like every time I turn my head, they got a six-foot girl inside down there. So they, they're always hoarding all the size. Um, so there's there's going to be a lot to, to, to figure out throughout this season. Then, of course, after the season, as far as if there's going to be any transfers or graduation being hit here and there. Um, but the one thing you can promise and know, uh, Savannah basketball is always going to be on the map. And they got a really big tournament. You hear about this big tournament they got going on that Savannah, uh, what do they call it, the Savannah Hoops. I know uh, Coach Gordon has been out there promoting it here. Everyone's very excited about this tournament. It sounds like it's going to be a really fun, uh, what is it, a two-day event. This, uh, well, first of all, let me – Calvary's new coach is Daniel Jackson. Yep. He's been he's been around. He's worked with Windsor Forest. Uh, he's going to have that program. You know, uh, you know. Uh, oh, now I, I can't remember. Now I got a blank. Um, he was there forever. Just retired. Oh, yeah, Jackie Hamilton. Jackie Hamilton. Okay, I just got a old age moment here, buddy. You got to understand that. You know, when you're an OG. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean Jackie Hamilton, and you know Daniel was his big right hand man. So it's mm-hmm. going to be fun to watch. Yes, yeah, Savannah Hoop Shootout. Uh, right. Which will take place next. Uh, it takes place Thanksgiving week. Right. Yeah, they got Calvary. They uh, they got a uh, Benedictine. They got St Andrews from the GIA back to back state champions in that AAA. Uh, Johnson's playing. I mean, so it, it you know it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, you know pretty pretty decent. And it, they're playing it uh, at the uh, Enmark Arena, which is something special because that'll be really the first high school basketball pl- uh, tournament um, played. Um, in Savannah since they used to play it at the Civic Center. Mm. So, uh, you know, it's 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 definitely uh, – it's the Savannah uh, Savannah shootout, okay, Savannah hoop shootout. I, I got to find more information about it. I know a lot about it. I mean, they're getting everybody pumped. It's two-day affair with the boys. And, of course, you know, um, Coach uh, Jordan uh, – Gordon, with Coach Jordan, we're at the media day for uh, – for the Savannah China County Public Schools, and they were, you know, uh, you know, promoting it. You want to check it out? I got, it, I got it on YouTube. If you want to check it out and see what happened, mm-hmm. what they talked about. So yeah, it's going to blow everything up. Uh, last night, the Savannah China County Public Schools did their big uh, tip off uh, at um, Beach High School three point contest. I mean, it was crazy. I hope it was a packed house. So you know, everybody here is ready for basketball. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Very good All basketball right. to be employed. I don't want to keep you any longer. I already went over uh, two minutes here. Two minutes, we went on four minutes. Okay, you and I could probably talk for five hours. But uh, anyway, plug your site, sandyspiels.com, what people need to do, how can they get you information and all that other stuff. Yes, sandyspiel.com. That's S-A-N-D-Y-S-S-P-I-E-L.com. Of course, on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it now, <laughs> Kyle Sandy 355 and Sandy Spiel on there. And then even on Instagram, uh, Sandy Spiel. That's where I just post pretty much just straight highlights from all the games I attend. Uh, quick little clips. So all that information, sandyspill.com and on Twitter at Kyle Sandy 355. And you know what? I do have a Savannah team coming to play at one of my Sandy Spill showcase events. I have Calvary Day boys coming December 2nd at Darlington. Nice. Yes, they're coming all the way up to Rome. They're going to be playing Temple at 2.30. So if you want to come up and see Northwest Georgia, we got Calvary Day going to be there. That's a long ride from the uh, southeast tundra here. You know what I mean? It most certainly is. So <laughs> I, I am very blessed and thankful that they're making that drive. It's not It's not a pack, uh, a brown bag of lunch like Tommy Palmer used to say. It's like you got to pack a lunch, pack a dinner, and then treat to come home after that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully <laughs> so. that bus ride treats them well.
Well, we'll follow. Well, I mean, like I told you before, you do a great job, and uh, you really are in, you know, into what you're doing here. And, I, and a lot of people know about your website, and that's why I wanted to kick it off. We'll we'll do this two or three times during the season uh, when I can get you away from basketball and your fiance. That's another thing. So uh, we'll go from there. But appreciate you always coming on. And uh, once again, have fun at the tournament. Where, where, where are you going to be? I am going to be at North Oconee. I am going to be at North Oconee today. Uh, which is at what is this Saturday? So I'll be over there. It's seven or eight games, just a bunch of jumble of teams to <laughs> knock off. And it's not too far from my house. It's only about an hour away because I'm not close to anything anymore. So I got to take it when I can when it's in my backyard. I hear you. I hear you, Kyle. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Hey, keep the ball bouncing there, buddy. Yes, sir. You as well. I mean, just just a young guy that loves high school basketball, doing it for nine years already. Kyle Sandy, Sandy, Sandy Spiel, Sandy, S-A-N-D-Y, S, Sandy's, Spiel, S-P-E-P-I-E-L.com. You, you got to check it out. I mean, the guy does just a great job. And let me make sure I'm spelling that right. Uh, <laughs> you know you know how the old coach is. Uh, yeah, Sandy, S-A-N-D-Y, S. S P I E L Sandy Spiel.com. Check it out. He's going to have all, he's already posted his preseason teams to watch his preseason players to watch. Go check it out. And if you have anything, just give him a comment or tell him what's going on. And he'll definitely uh, get it out there for the rest of the, the state of Georgia. Like I said, he covers the state of Georgia. I'm back live. Check one, two, three, check, check one, two, three, check. Just had a little glitch in the uh, internets there. So I'm just checking that I'm back live. I'm back live, yes. But yes, Kyle Sandy, great young guy. Uh, the guru of high school basketball. Nine years, I said eight to start with, uh, pretty special. And he's up at a tournament in Oak Lake Oconee or North Oconee, whatever you want to call it. So uh, once again, check it out. SandySpiel.com. Basketball, it's here. It's here. One more segment to go. Got to get three steps out the door, but I got to go back and do two steps in the door because I wanted to keep it on time because that young lady, my guest, Maggie. Okay, let me get it right here. Let me get my Maggie Kirakitis. Okay, was at a, a volleyball uh, function she had to get to. So uh, once again, appreciate her from Savannah Christian. There was no break. So I got to thank my sponsors right now. I'll be back in three and a half minutes. You're watching the Call of the Monster Sports Sport on the Soundgarden stage at Coach's Corner. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Hey, sports fans. Looking for the ultimate sports and entertainment destination in Savannah, Georgia? Look no further than Coach's Corner. At Coach's Corner, you'll find everything you need for a great time, including TVs everywhere so you can catch all the latest sporting events, an outdoor seating area perfect for enjoying a drink or a meal on a warm day, a wide array of drink options from beers to cocktails, a comprehensive sports schedule so you can cheer on your favorite teams year-round, prompt service even when it's crowded, a fun and lively atmosphere perfect for letting loose with your friends. And of course, delicious food. From famous chicken wings, hamburgers, to delectable calzones and pizzas, Coach's Corner menu is sure to satisfy your cravings. In addition to all this, Coach's Corner also features an upgraded sound garden. Now more seats, more bars, and an upgraded sound system. It's the perfect spot for hundreds of fans to gather and enjoy the latest local bands, tribute acts, and rising stars. So what are you waiting for? Join us at Coach's Corner for the ultimate sports, music, and culinary experience. Coach's Corner can't wait to see you soon. Remember, Coach's Corner is located at 3016 Victory Drive, right in Thunderbolt, Georgia, and on the World Wide Web at Coaches.net. Remember, Coach's Corner, where every day is game day. At Calvary Day School, we want our students to be fully equipped and on the cutting edge of academics making a difference in our world. Your child will grow academically, physically, socially, and spiritually. At Calvary, it is so good to say we are one school with one mission and one vision. Faith, academics, excellence, and building champions through Christ. Calvary Day School, we consider it a privilege to meet with your family personally. Call Philip Lee, Director of Admissions at 351-2299. That's 351-2299. For over half a century, it comes in uniforms, sporting goods, or trophies. Thompson's got you covered. From cleats to caps and best prices on the biggest brand, Under Armour, Adidas, and more. From baseball to soccer, volleyball to softball, and yes, football too. Every season starts at Thompson Sports Shop. From cutting and equipped at Thompson Sports Shop's new location, 6606 Abercorn Street Suite, 102 in Savannah. 
Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and seasonal on Saturdays. At locally owned Thompson Sporting Goods and Trophies, come see where everyone is a winner. Yo, you still want some real New York Italian food? Bada bing, bada boom. Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering is open at 7630 Skidaway Road, Tuesday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. serving breakfast and lunch right here in Savannah, Georgia. Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering has been serving the public for over three years. Now, if you want Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering goods delivered to your door, go online to savannatakeout.com or doordash.com or just pick up the phone and call 912-354-2914. That's right, 912-354-2914. Kabish, and remember, we ain't New York style. We are New York at Rocky's New York Deli and Italian Catering. Wellington Chiropractic Clinic. Your back hurts, another body part hurts all the time. It makes you mad, the pain drives you crazy. You just want to pick something up and throw it across the room? If you can, at the Weatherton Chiropractic Clinic, you get complete chiropractic care and pain relief to help you move better, have a less painful life, and of course, achieve a healthier lifestyle. The Weatherton Chiropractic Clinic is now located at two locations in Savannah, Georgia, at 329 Eisenhower Drive and in Pooler at 114 Canal Street, Suite 603. So visit Dr. Bart Weatherington at the Weatherington Chiropractic Clinic for all your chiropractic needs. And welcome back to the Carl Demasi Sports Report right here on the Sound Garden stage, right here at Coach's Corner, because it's all part of the Coach's Corner Sports Network. All right. Three steps out the door, but what I did was I didn't finish three steps in the door because I had to keep on track. So I'm going to go back to what I usually do at the beginning of the show to make this quick. All the news, the local news, the local sports that you need to know. Last night, step one, high schools, okay? Um, step one, high schools, okay? Playoffs last night, okay? Richmond Hill, 7A, travel to Grayson, one of the powerhouses here in Georgia High School. Good showing by the Wildcats, but came up short 34-24. Grayson. Okay, in 6A, Lovejoy comes into Effingham County, beats them 47-14. You know, while I'm doing this, I spend time doing this. Let me show you. Uh, that's uh, that's the comments. You got a comment, let me know. Let me roll, scroll it across the bottom. Okay, there you go. Grayson, 34, Richmond Hill, 24. Okay, in uh, 6A, Lovejoy, 47, Effingham, 14. In 5A, upset. Number four beats number one seed, Jenkins, 14. Arabia Mountain, 13. They'll take on Dutchtown next week. Class 3-8, Calvary all over Jackson, 48 nothing. Senior night, great bunch of seniors over there. They'll take on Thomasville next week. Savannah Christian, four overtimes. Check out the story on the prepsportsreport.com. 48-46, four overtimes written by Nathan Dominance. Okay, uh, Ups and Lee comes back. Beats Savannah Country Day. Savannah Country Day had the lead. Uh, couldn't hold on. They lost 46-45. Heartbreaker. Uh, Savannah Christian will play Morgan County next week. Morgan County, number one seed. 10-1 and one on the season. All right, they'll be on the road. And in Class A, Division I, Bryan County, the Redskins, all over East Lawrence, 54-14. to They'll take on Pelham, a number three seed. So Bryan County could hold their second home playoff game in school history. In Georgia Independent Athletic Association, GIAA, in 3A, Tiff County beats the uh, visitor, St. Andrew Lions, 49-27. St. Andrew showed up with 17 players, a lot of injuries over there to end the season for the Lions. Uh, in uh, Skiza, let me take a spe step back. I was at this game. Got to thank about. Got to think about the the Memorial Day score. Ma Memor <laughs> Memorial Day school. I know people. Uh, you know, now he's a novice. How can he be doing this? Well, it's a lot of fun. Memorial Day school uh, beat Harvester Christian, thirty four six to move on to the semifinals in the Georgia Independent Athletic Association single A division. Two weeks ago, they lost to Robert Toome, sixty three to six. So hopefully. Uh, Coach Jaha Teller can have them better. Javaris Teller. All right. Uh, Bethesda, going to the championship. Going to the ship. Charleston Southern. They'll be taking on Williamsburg Academy. Undefeated also. Two undefeated teams. Going at it next week for the Skiza AA championship. Bethesda all over Northside Christian, 32-6. to six. All right. Tonight. Today. 6 o'clock. Okay. Don't forget. At Memorial Stadium. Undefeated Benedictine, the military school, cadets take on Baldwin, 6 o'clock. And over in Pooler, 
First home game ever. Playoff home game ever for the New Hampshire Phoenix. Kyle Hockman's crew takes on West Side making 6 o'clock. You got to go check it out, okay? All right. Cross country. Don't want to leave these kids out. And I know I started talking about it when I was having my little problems with the internet with Maggie, okay? So let's start off. In 2A, Savannah Hearts Academy girls won it last year. They finished third this year. Leah Neese finished fourth individually with a time of 2020.23. 20, uh, Ellie Howard Grant was ninth with 21.17. Freshman Francie Tedder finished 14th. Ava Thomas finished 29th. Layla Balance finished 47th. In the boys' 2A race, Marshall Lego of Savannah Arts finished 30th with a time of 18.08. It's pretty impressive. All right, let's go to 3A. Savannah Christian sophomore Pierce Goodman was a top boys finisher in 3A from Savannah with uh, a time of 17.44. He finished in 19th place. On the girls' side, Savannah Christian's freshman Leah Amick had a strong showing with a sign of uh, time of 21.42. She finished 18th, while a teammate, Orgy Wilson, finished 34th with a time of 22.40. In 4A, Benedictine's John Dotson was the medalist. He medaled. He finished in eighth place with a time of 16, point, 16 minutes, 39 seconds, point seven tenths of a second. Okay, um, so uh, he medaled. Only a junior. Big things for John Donaldson next week, next year. In 5A, Jenkins Jr. Hart Tedder was the top runner from Savannah. Uh, he finished in 40th with a time of 17.09. 17.09, he finished fourth. In, sixth, in 6A, South Effingham senior Julian Howard was the top boys runner with a time of 16.55. He finished 16. And in 7A, Richmond Hill, one of the best cross-country programs in the state. Okay, on the boys' side, Noah Siebert was the top finisher for the Wildcats. Senior took 14th place. Father Levi, great doer right there with a time of 16.08. Memphis Rich, uh, who was last year's 7A state champion, uh, finished 33rd with a time of 16.42. I heard there was a little situation with his shoes. Uh, all right. On a girl's side, freshman Julia Anastasio led the way, finishing 21st with a time of 19.48. And my last week's uh, athlete of the week, Jul Julia, uh, what was Julia's name? Julia Wilson. Okay. She finished in 30th. Okay. So th there we go. That's the uh, cross country. Don't forget, we got flag football. We still got a couple of uh, weeks ago. Last day that the girls can play is uh, all, uh, is uh, November 30th. November 30th. Um, Calvary can seal up the region with a win Tuesday with two wins against Johnson and Glenn, which they should do because in that Division One Area One flag football, Calvary 7-0 in region play, 13 and two over two followed by Long County, Jenkins, and Islands. If Islands wins their last two, they, they make the playoffs. First time flag football for Islands, okay? Uh, in the other side, in Division One Area 2, New Hampstead, 13-0. They're at 7-0. They'll can clinch the region title next week, followed by Savannah Country Day, Woodville, Tompkins, and St. Vincent's. Okay, St. Vincent's and Effingham are tied. I don't know what the tiebreaker is. I'll have to find out for you, but flag football. Ends November 30th. Playoffs start right after that. All right. Step two, college. Volleyball. The Savannah State season's over. They finished 12-12. and 12, uh, 8 and 11 in the SEAC. Football, heartbreaker, last game of the year. Uh, they went down 21-0 against Lane College. They stormed back. They tied it. They lost in overtime 27-21. Um, so uh, the loss ends SSU season with an overall record of 2-8, and 1-7 in uh, the SEAC. All right, and it's the first time Lane College has ever beat Savannah State, or it's the last time Lane College beat Savannah State was in 1968. <laughs> oh, man. All right, college football. Georgia Tech's on a roll. They beat Virginia last week, 47-17. Big game at Clemson. Come here, watch it in the Sound Garden, okay, against Clemson. Noon today, Georgia Tech takes on Clemson, okay? A lot of implications there as far as, uh, well, Georgia Tech wins their bowl eligible. Clemson wins their bowl eligible, so we'll go from there. All right, Georgia, tonight, 7 o'clock, takes on Ole Miss, number 10 Ole Miss. College game day is from there. Nolan Smith uh, will be the, the guest 
uh, host or the guest picker at 1130 this morning. Okay. Uh, that's a 7 p.m. kickoff last week. Georgia took care of Missouri, ranked team, 20, uh, 30 to 21. All right. Georgia Southern, last week at Texas State, not a good one. Lost 45-24. They're up there in Huntington, West Virginia. They'll take on We Are, Marshall, at 7 p.m. Georgia State lost to the top team in the Sun Belt, James Madison, 42-14. They'll host App State today at 2 p.m. SCAD soccer, the men are over. They finished 6, 8, and 4. All right, the ladies, the women's soccer team is the Sun Belt Conference. Sorry, the Sun Conference, not the Sun Belt, the Sun Conference uh, champion. Uh, they beat uh, Southeastern yesterday 4-0. Um, the, NA, the, NA, the NAIA playoffs will be coming up soon. Okay, well, next week we'll find out who they play. They hosted that championship, the Sun Conference championship in Hardyville yesterday. 4-0 win. Lady B's ranked sixth in NAIA. Going on to the playoffs. College uh, is over. Step uh, While college hoops are going to start, I'll have more about that next week. Uh, step three is professionals. Falcons, Falcons, Falcons. Four and five, second place. They lost to a backup quarterback who only had five days worth of uh, uh, practice, Mr. Dobbs, for the Minnesota Vikings. They lost 31-28. They'll play at Arizona tomorrow. Four or five start. I just don't know about the Falcons. Okay. Uh, Brian Harmon's off. Tim O'Neill last week. At the Timberlakes Championships, when I talked to you, he was tied for 45th. He finished tied for 25th at one under. Gene Sowers is still has not played. Savannah Bananas, you need tickets? Go online, savannahbananas.com. You want to get to their uh, tour sites? I applied. I'm trying to get mine for uh, for Tampa Bay. You got to go in, in, in the lottery. So uh, go to savannahbananas.com to get your tickets. Uh, to do that. Savannah Falcons, semi-pro football team. They're looking for help in the front office. They're looking for coaches. Go to Savannah Falcons, semi-pro team uh, on uh, Facebook. Find out how can you be part of that. In the Soundgarden last night, okay, we had uh, Freebird, Leonard Skin and Tribute Band. Next Friday night, we got Slippery from Wet. Slippery from Wet. Slippery when Wet, the ultimate Bon Jovi tribute band. All right. I had to do that. Had to get that all in. I didn't do it at the beginning of the show. Like I said, I got to learn. I got to rearrange my show. Uh, maybe that first segment's got to be a little longer so I can get all this information in. All right. So there's your school scores from last night rolling in. I'll keep them scrolling. Now it's time to go to three steps out the door with the coach. This is where I take three videos, social media videos that I've seen that uh, have stood out for me. And uh, this first one brings back childhood memories because we used to play in an old uh, elementary school and the right field had like a green monster but if you hit it over the green monster there was a chance that you're gonna break the windows in this house and sure enough one of my friends did it but hey how about the 50 year old Ichiro 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 Suza <laughs> I'm having a tough time Ichiro okay great major league baseball Suzuki uh breaking a window in a warehouse or a school from what I understand and the kids just love it it's in Japanese so uh, you're not going to understand it, but just take a look. He's still got it. It's Shiro at 50 years old. His uh, young baseball players love it. You got to love it. And the Atlanta Braves. Lost a great baseball coach. Not no, he's still alive, but he's now the head of the coach at or the manager of the Los Angeles Los Angeles Angels, and they were playing a lot of highlights on social media. Ron Washington doing a dance after a big win over the Dodgers in the Braves dugout. You gotta love it. Won eight of nine since leaving Atlanta. The first three here against the Dodgers. There he is. And Wash is putting on a display over there in the dugout. As the Braves go for a sweep today of the L.A. Dodgers. And that's from Bally Sports. You got to love it. And last night or yesterday afternoon while I was doing getting ready for the show, hype videos, football hype videos. They're all over the Internet. Football hype videos. Well, of course, there's one for today's game. Georgia taking on Ole Miss at 7 o'clock tonight. Right here. Come watch it. You got the nine 75-inch screens on the big screen right here at Coach's Corner. You got small screens on the side. You're going to love it. You can watch it any way you want in the house. But here's this week's Georgia's Hype video. 
Hopefully it doesn't get my show blocked on the internet. Oh, the stories I could tell. Yeah, a little guy like me has been around your whole time here at Georgia. Through this rich bloodline of Georgia dogs, we witnessed the greatest teams in Georgia history. That's how we come together. We've all heard the stories of those seniors who came before you. They pushed you to fight through adversity, have relentless effort, and taught the importance of building a bond with your brother. Play on, boys. Play, baby. Let's go. Nothing but love for the men in this room. But this senior class is something special. Some would say this is the winningest class in Georgia history. Building on the foundation that was laid by those who came before you. While this may be your last time wearing red and black on this field, your legacy will be solidified in Georgia history forever. You will always be damn good dogs. Gives me the goosebumps. Last home game for Georgia. Last game for those seniors that have the winniest class to graduate from Georgia football program. Just gives me the goosebumps just watching that last time ever. That was my editorial last week was talking about seniors playing their last high school football games last week because that was the end of the regular season. Calls editorial. <coughs> it's not really an editorial. It's information that you guys need to know. Every two years, the Georgia High School State Association realigns our schools here in the state of Georgia based on enrollment, based on transfers, based on kids coming in and out of school. And uh, they decided that maybe the students come first now. So they go into six classifications. They're going to try and um, have the regions geographically set up so students, student athletes, don't miss much seat time in school. So uh, just to let you know, if you go to the prepsportsreport.com, I uh, posted the region alignments. And here I'm going to show you a little uh, PowerPoint I put together for you here. And that's the name of it. One more step to make it a final. So what happens is last week, they put everybody in classifications. If you didn't like the classification you were in, you appealed. So, of course, schools appealed. All right. Uh, FEM County wanted to come down from 6A to 5A. They lost their appeal. So now the region, the classifications are set, but now the regions are not set because teams can now appeal to move from one region to another to get better, uh, you know, geographical uh, distance from other schools so that students don't lose um, seat time. So now I don't know if you can see this. Let's take class 6A. Now in region one, you got Camden County, Colquitt, Lowndes, and Tift and Valdosta. Now we add Effingham and Richmond Hill. Effingham going from 6A to 7, uh, going from 6A, staying in 6A, but with the big boys from 7A. Now class 5A, Bradwell, Brunswick, Evans, Glen, Greenbrier, Lakeside, Evans, South Effingham. No more South Effingham, Effingham in the same classification or region and Statesboro. Now we go to 4A. Now this is a black and blue region. Uh, Benedictine appealed to stay up. They're staying up. They'll be with New Hampstead. But now we had Perry, Ware County, Warner Robins, and Wayne County. Now if that's not uh, if that's not a region, I don't know what to tell you. Then in 3A, we go Beach, Calvary Day, Beach, Calvary Day, Groves, Islands, Jenkins, Johnson, Liberty County, Long County, Southeast Bullock, Windsor Forest. Ten teams. They're probably going to subdivide it. But all the Chatham County private school, Chatham County public schools decided to stay together. So they appealed to be in class 3A, region 3. Calvary Day School is the only private school that appealed to stay up. Now we go to the next slide. Class 2A, all right, Savannah Arts Academy is there. They don't play football, but they'll be with Appling, Cook, Crisp, Pierce, and Tattnall. Now, that's going to be a lot of mileage for those Savannah Arts Academy athletic teams. Then you go to Class A Division I, 
Savannah Christian, Savannah Country, they are staying where they're at with St. Vincent's Woodville Tompkins. In Class A Division II, Bryan County is staying where they are, but they add Savannah High, Savannah Classical, Savannah Early College, okay, and STEM Academy. So I'm going to do a little, uh, hopefully a little report on what Savannah Classical, Savannah Early College, and the STEM Academy offer as far as athletics. But that's, I mean, you travel to Bryan County, Clexton, ECI, Jenkins County, McIntosh County, uh, Metter, Portal. That's going to be a tough division for uh, those schools. So that's where they're going. So my editorial today is, yes, Georgia High School is trying to do the right thing, but there are still some teams that will be traveling all over the place. Used to be you couldn't travel to a school on a school night that was more than 100 miles from you. 100 miles, that's an hour and a half on a bus. Maybe two hours. So we'll see what happens. So that's my editorial. That's the uh, Georgia High School State Association. Um, new classifications, region alignments. Check it out on the Call Demasi Sports Report or on the PrepSportsReport.com. All right. So uh, going a little strong here. I also did, uh, I do apologize because I said, drop me your comments. Okay. David Kelly drops in and says, good morning, coach. Good morning, David. I forgot to get you up there right away when you posted that. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a great show. Uh, a lot going on. Remember, tonight at Memorial Stadium, you got Benedictine against Baldwin, 6 p.m., first round of the Georgia High School State Association playoffs. And over in Pooler, you got New Hampshire taking on Westside Macon at 6 o'clock, also in the first round of the GHSA Class 4A state playoffs. Well, like I say every week, please say a prayer for what's going on in this crazy world. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh... It's just crazy, crazy, crazy. So please say a prayer for all, all those people that are, are, are in tough situations. And, uh, you know, it, it's tough to do. But that's why I do this show. Hopefully it'll take your mind off it for, for a couple of hours or an hour and 47 minutes where I'm at now. I'm almost 13 minutes, two hours, Lawrence. Long show. But uh, it's always a lot of fun. But like I say every week, besides saying prayers, all right, oh, I got to take a time out of here. Got to thank the veterans. Yes, because it's because of the vet veterans. It's because of the soldiers. It's because of the military that we're free to do what we do. Thank you on Veterans Day 2023. I'm an old guy. I always go by November 11th, but they did it yesterday, November 10th. There's a parade today in Savannah for Veterans Day, November 11th. So, uh, there, uh, you know, the veterans in my family uh, are long gone. Uh, my father, World War II, Korean War. My father-in-law, John Annunziata, Frank John Damasi, or Damasi as they say in New York. Uh, John Annunziata um, passed away four years ago. My father-in-law loved the guy, Pop. Got to thank them for what they do. And of course, my brother was uh, in the Navy. Uh, I think if my father was alive, I would have wound up being in the Navy or the Army or whatever. <laughs> but he passed away before I was old enough to go into the military. So uh, got to thank the veterans. Got to thank the veterans for letting us do what we do. So as I say every week, whatever you're doing today and tomorrow, always hit it out of the park. And until next week, may it be your best week ever. Peace, eight, peace out. God bless. Be safe. And let's hopefully the world will get to be a better place. Take care. Go dogs. 7 o'clock. Ole Miss right here at Coach's Corner.